we're considered as the pioneers of something called mobile peer-to-peer -peer mesh networking. Uh, what the heck is that? I think <laughs> this video will uh, help answer that question. Thank you. Food, clothing, shelter, three of the most basic human needs. But there's a fourth. It's communication. And it's so important that we'll overcome any obstacle to achieve it. We've hammered words into stone, written across frontiers, braved wild oceans, strong cables around the earth, and then built technology to liberate ourselves from them. Now it's time to take the next leap with a free network created by people that doesn't need a signal, that can't be censored or shut down, that goes where we go. Because our right to communicate is just too important to trust to anyone else. Welcome to the Internet of Us. The problem we're trying to solve is connectivity between mobile devices that are now very widespread. There are about 7 billion people on the planet. About half of that number is the number of smartphones, I mean, mobile phones out there. And you divide it half again, and you have the number of smartphones today. You can buy a very good smartphone for 18, equivalent of 18 US dollars in Manila today. But the problem is many of them are disconnected. And what you see here are numbers in a few sample countries. The number, percentage of people who are not able to send a message at a point in time in a given month. Uh, two reasons for that, costs, or just the quality or availability of networks. So. Uh, Smartphones, smartphones are everywhere. If you have a connection to a Wi-Fi internet access point or a cellular network, it's great. If you don't, uh, you can't do much with it. And what our software does is, it's pretty hard, maybe hard to see on this uh, chart, but it connects all the phones directly with one another, hence the word mesh. If you have more than two phones, you start forming a chain and the range of that network increases, and the coverage increases. So as you see, the traditional networks are very hierarchical, kind of top-down. If you don't have the connection directly to the network, you're out of luck. In our case, it's horizontal, and it uh, doesn't mean to replace the traditional networks, but enhance their availability. How does it work? Peer-to-peer -peer connections. You have a number of capabilities in the smartphone in your pocket today. Everybody knows about Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. There's also something we can use in the peer-to-peer -peer way. You don't necessarily need to connect to a router that's connected to the internet. You can use something called uh, Wi-Fi Direct or peer-to-peer -peer Wi-Fi to connect all of our phones directly with one another. And uh, lesson on things such as the end protocol, for example. So that creates a third type of network that can also function as a uh, very cheap way, because it's software only, to collect uh, information from so-called IoT devices, if we want to. We've used it to create three types of products, for lack of a better word, FileChat, which is this messaging app that works without an internet connection or cellular coverage. That was the video we just saw. This was really designed for communities and press. Uh, something called Alerts that's been used by government and NGOs in uh, emergency situations. And finally, uh, we decided to productize our technology to make it available to other app developers. So if you want to make your app uh, work offline, you can use our libraries and we'll support you to do that. I was given the one minute uh, sign, so I'm going to speed through that. Uh, FiveChat, if you want to play with it, has two modalities. That is, it's a little bit like Twitter, has a public uh, messages capability and the private messages capability. Private messages are encrypted end-to-end. -end. And they, yes, they will work offline on the plane or in Philadelphia last summer or other places, <laughs> wherever you want to try that. And it's been used in all those situations. What you see in the upper left-hand corner here was a little visit of the Pope Francis in the Philippines in Manila in January last year. Alerts for emergency communications and then uh, I'm happy to uh, talk to anybody who is interested in this MeshKit technology and what kind of use cases are viable today or not. And is the list of some people we've worked with or working with now.
and my time is up. I can speak loudly, um, and I apologize. I apologize for this not being a question. I was at an event on Sunday. We were those hands around Lake Merritt, and it was an experience that was very interesting because there were perhaps seven in synchronized an effort. Would it work in that situation? It could. Um, so I have to talk about the catch. There's always a catch when technology looks like magic, and the cat here is really the density, the range uh, of those wireless transport uh, capabilities today is about um, 70 meters to uh, 200 feet from one point to the next. In some cases it's twice as much, in some cases it's half of that. So you need to have enough density, uh, meaning enough nodes, for this network to form itself. Uh, so that's really the biggest question. And then the second question will be the latency, because you're going from one to the next to the next, so you have a number of hubs, right? Uh, so the, you can reduce the number of hops also by having really high din density. So it's, uh, if, you, if you're looking for precision at the level of the minute, uh, and you have uh, more than, say, a couple hundred nodes per square kilometer, you, you'll get that. If you're looking at uh, precision at the level of the fraction of a second, I don't think this is ready for that use case right now. I have a question. What is your vision for this for an application? Because in my brain, I'm thinking of countries that I've traveled to where the service is spotty or you lose it or things of that nature. And I'm wondering how this could work in some of those places. Right. Uh, and thanks for asking. In fact, the, the places where we see the fastest adoption are India, the Philippines, um, South America, and pretty much places where you have High density urban areas, uh, very expensive mobile data. In fact, it's not called that, it's Pulsa or Load or uh, Saldo, or you know, depending on where you go. Uh, so, people are really seeing this as a way to uh, um, overcome the costs and sometimes the poor reliability of the networks that, that, that are available to them. So yeah, and that, our strategy, I think you were kind of asking that as well, is to work with app developer because the density is really the key to making this uh, ubiquitous and also um, very per, um, high performance. The more uh, devices uses a stack, the faster the, the network gets for everybody, uh, which is the reason why we're working with app developers, primarily right now media companies who are interested in using this as a way to reach more people. So they they're, they do all this work to reach uh, people on the mobile phones, and they can only reach maybe 40 or 50 percent of the target population. Well, with this uh, technology, they can reach further. Last question. Hi, thank you. <clears throat> um, I'm a researcher, um, and I do surveys and different types of research in developing countries. So uh, to clarify, you know, I'm interested in having, being able to reach people who, like you said, may not have enough credit left on their phone, but I want them to take a mobile survey because I want to you know, eliminate that bias. So to clarify, every, people have to download, like you have to have the app, the MeshKit app, for your phone to be able to connect. It's not like an automatic thing that somebody would be able to, to access. So they have to know about it and be aware. Yes, basically. correct. Today you would need to have a so-called flash kit enabled app on your phone. Uh, we, we can do that with your own app, or you can go through someone else's app, or through FireChat. Uh, as long as the stack is on the phone, that then this uh, peer-to-peer communication capability is, is, is not work. But it's, it, that if you don't have it, then you just don't have it. Okay. <laughs> so thank you so much and special thanks to Anna and Susan for having us here today.